Hey there, welcome to day 1,592 of What You Have To Now. Sharon Hornell's room here, documenting the journey from the offline to the online world, from uh, running dozens of different businesses and uh, working over a quarter century in, in corporate America. She's almost 49 years of businesses and corporate America. And then I switched to, in 2017, the online world. <clears throat> Following my divorce, I had to come up with something I wanted to do because I was, you know, Older, I could have retired, but I'm like, mm, I don't want to retire. I want to find out. I'm still curious about the world of work, the world of business, how things work, especially the online world, because I dabbled a little bit, but never really done anything online. And I wanted to find out what all the hoopla was about, I guess, and, and what worked and what didn't. Now, of course, like so many others, I fell prey to a lot of the different pitfalls that happen in the online world. Now, if I experienced the ones in the offline world first. So I don't know why I was surprised that I fell for some of the things in the online world. But lessons learned, they're all lessons learned and stepping stones to what it is that we want to create. So today, I, every morning, I make two pieces of content, three, including this particular journey, um, documenting my journey of what I'm working on. Uh, but I do a uh, an idiom, an idiom related to our annual challenge, and I do an annual challenge. This year's annual challenge is the BU 365 day challenge. You do one thing every day that improves us in some way. And this month's focus for the month of June is relationships and relationship well being. So, our idiom for today, our topic for today was core values. And the idiom I selected to tie into that was take one's vows. Now, take one's vows is I've only done, I've only taken vows once in my life. I've been married once and divorced. So obviously I took my vows seriously, but the ex, maybe not so much. Uh, and what that meant to us was different. But what I realized as I was talking about it in Supersize Your Business is when we make vows to other people, just like an oath, when, when a politician makes an oath of office, they're making an oath in front of and to an institution or a an authority, you know, and when we make that oath for someone or something else, we don't necessarily hold ourselves accountable to upholding that oath. <clears throat> Look at how many politicians have, have sworn an oath and then gone right ahead and broken that oath, right? And in, in a multitude of ways. <clears throat> some of them get caught, some of them don't, some of them are disgraced, some of them aren't. There's been, you know, politicians that get away with with criminal behavior and unethical and moral behavior for decades, for their entire careers, and they, they just get away with it. Now, I contend that we all pay for it in the end, right? We transition, die, uh, we all will be held accountable. Uh, maybe you don't believe that. I personally believe that, that um, we will answer for, in whatever way is appropriate for us, our actions here on the planet. Did we make the world a better place? Did we not make the world a better place? Uh, what lessons did we learn in this lifetime and did we actually learn them or do we need to go around again and try it out try it out to to fix the mistakes that we've made in the past given whatever is a mistake for our soul our being etc i'm getting away harry carry uh harry fairy on this but i don't and i don't want to but taking one's vows to me means i'm vowing and committing something and i'm making a personal vow a vow to me is personal and i'm making a personal commitment to the thing I, I'm committing to, the thing I say I'm going to do. So when I took my wedding vows, I made a commitment that I was going to be married to my now ex-husband and and I was only going to be with him our entire lifetime, right? And he made that same commitment, but made different choices. So it's hard to talk about that because I feel like uh, <clears throat> I made a mistake in who I picked and who I, I trusted with the vow, the vow of marriage. And so it's, it's really interesting because <clears throat> usually taking a vow has something to do with, with religion or committing ourselves to God or to religion or to whatever. But I like to, the definition of it's to make a decision and a promise to do something and to do something no matter what. Do what you say you're going to do with respect to this thing, no matter what. If, with respect to our businesses and growing our businesses, if you have a business or a job or a career, you commit to that 100%. There is no, I'm I'm going to quit. You you commit to building and growing that business and achieving the goal that you want. No matter what happens outside of you, you're going to figure it out. Short of, of course, 
expiring or dying or transitioning or whatever you call it, you're going to keep moving toward that thing until it becomes a reality for you and in your life. That's my personal view and definition on a vow. If I vow to do something, once I commit to it, me for me, commitment is the same thing. Once I commit to doing something, I'm going to do it no matter what, right? And that's why I love challenges so much. Challenges to me are a commitment to myself, and I know I'm going to do it no matter what. And, you know, it started a long time ago for me. Whenever I wanted to do something or figure something out or improve something, I would make a commitment to it or I'd make it a challenge to myself. And that meant I was going to figure it out no matter what. Sometimes I feel like Thomas Edison, you know, you got to try 10,000 plus times to figure something out. But as long as you keep trying and keep making progress, even when you don't make progress, you learn what doesn't work and you take that lesson and you roll it in to everything to create whatever it is that you want in your life. Um, we don't we don't make a solemn vow to a lot of things but i do think we need to vow to always be becoming a better version of ourselves right i have vowed to become a better version of myself and that means a little bit every day not not massive changes but just a little bit every day which is why i like annual challenges will the vast majority of people on the planet ever do an annual challenge no if even one percent of the people on the planet ever challenge themselves for a year to do or improve in a certain area, I would be surprised. And I think that's part of why I like doing them because you know, it's easy to pick a word of the year. That's a big thing online. People say, this is my word of the year, patience or communication or hope or whatever, inspiration or um, <clears throat> influence, whatever they pick. Um, and they'll, you know, it's just like a new year's resolution. They'll, They'll spout it off the beginning of the year. They'll probably won't do anything with it until about the last week of the year. And then they'll say, hmm, how many times was I patient this year? And they won't really have made any improvement. But if we just say, hey, I'm going to do one little thing every day to have more fun, to be happier, to feel more love, to stretch my comfort zone, to be myself and, and become a better version of myself. That's something we can do. And it's a little thing we can do. And, and it's going to show up in different ways every day, depending on what's going on around us. But at the end of the year, we have made so much progress that we wouldn't have otherwise made just by committing to doing one little thing a day, right? It's like committing to get up to the, at the same time every day. One of the best things I ever did for myself, and my health, and my mental well-being and my emotions and everything else was commit to, I get up at the same time every morning, no matter what day of the week it is, whether it's a holiday or not, I get up at the same time every day. And sometimes that time changes based on the commitments I've made. When I was uh, taking care of my granddaughter during the pandemic, um, <clears throat> I got up at four o'clock or 4.30 every day because I wanted to produce my content, do my work before she came so that when she was with me, I could be with her. Um, but now that I'm not watching her, and I might be watching her again this summer a little bit, I'll back that up to 4 o'clock, 4.30 again. But right now, I don't usually get up till 6, 6.30 because I don't have that commitment. And I can make my schedule a little more lenient. But it's still the same time every day, whether it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Christmas, New Year's, whatever. I get up the same time every day. Why? Because it makes me feel better and feel awesome. And <clears throat> it also encourages me to make better choices, right? I'm not going to choose to go to bed at two o'clock in the morning if I know I'm going to get up at four or five or six, or, right? I'm not going to, you know, stay up watching a movie or a show. I'm not going to eat a bunch of junk food right before bed because I know that's going to make me feel terrible and it won't have been digested by the time I get up if I do it late before bed, etc. So it helps me to, to make my life better and make my life work the way I want it to. Uh, and we all have the ability to pick and choose what we want in our lives and how we want our lives to be. A lot of the times it doesn't feel like it. When I was younger, it definitely didn't feel like I had infinite possibilities and choices, right? Based on, and a lot of, a lot of when I was younger, I remember thinking in <clears throat> high school when I was going to go to college, I got to pick a major. I got to pick the direction I'm going to go. And even in high school, picking classes, I knew I wanted to go to college. I didn't know what I wanted to study. I was very artistic. My art teacher wanted me to go to art school, but I thought I'm not going to make any money going to art school, so I'm not going to art school. My, you know, science teachers wanted me to be a scientist, my, et cetera. But 
<clears throat> I ended up, I, I went journalism at first and, and then switched my major a gazillion times and ended up graduating with an engineering marketing and a management degree. Why? Because I knew I wanted to have my own businesses someday. And I figured I needed a foundational understanding of those core functions in order to run my own business. So done all that. But um, I remember the pressure that I felt to pick something and then stick to it. And then once I changed my mind once or twice, I gave myself to, to permission to change my mind a lot till I found what I wanted to do and what felt right. Yet I still found that I was doing what people outside of me and what the world expected of me, not what necessarily felt right and good and perfect for me. I didn't know when I was that young that I, that I could make choices, right? I wish we came with, and I wish there was a human being training that we all went through, um, regardless of our economic situation, regardless of our parents, regardless of our, our, where we grow up and where we're born that taught us about things like how to create things, universal laws, the power of our mind and thinking and believing and, and our beliefs and all of it. I wish that we all had all of that when we were young so that all of the stuff we experienced wouldn't have such a negative impact on us. You know, all the bullying, the harassment, the uh, mean behavior from other people and sometimes coming out of us, we wouldn't have to learn by making mistakes. We could actually have a manual that taught us how to do things or how the world really works versus how certain people tell us it works because they want to control and manipulate us, right? All right. I'm getting off on a, a bizarre tangent. It has nothing to do with what we talked about today. I did share different core values and our, our action item was just to pick and share one core value that you have with respect to relationships. You know, it can always be love, communication, whatever else. Honesty and trustworthiness to me are big. Honesty as much as trustworthiness. There's a difference to me between being honest and being trustworthy. And I want to be trustworthy because then I will be trusted and I will trust other people as well. Um, honesty again is it's situational. Honesty can be situational. I think trustworthiness you're, is a core thing. You're all, you're either trustworthy or you're not. Uh, you can be and honesty is more situational depending on what's going on. And they've done studies about that as well. Scientific studies where normally perfectly honest moral people will commit a crime because it feels right in that situation. All right. That's it. Have an awesome day. If I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow.